What's up geeks and gamers? My name is Draymond and welcome to Thorium Gaming and we're back with Knightly Valor. Our attempts to bring the light of the Lady of the Lake to the entirety of the old world. And man, I am tired. Just got back from a road trip and ate a colossal amount of food. Canadian Thanksgiving, so happy Thanksgiving or Turkey Day or whatever you want to call it for all you Canadians out there. Americans, you'll get your chance soon enough. So for the last little bit, we've been trying to push forward up north. We do have Lord Adon sitting there, getting reinforced right now with some really high-level knights. It's going to help us out a fair bit. And we do have Lord Muffin heading up to help him. Down in the center of the realm, not too much is going on. Do have Yelena here, just, you know, chilling with her troops. Not too much to go on. In the south, there's a giant chaos stack under a chaos lord with a dragon. But we're hoping that the Empire is going to deal with him. France has a lot of hand gunners. And of course we have Grimaldus and Phoenix near Lashik, which we might reclaim. Although it's not really ours in general. And there's a couple of more Chaos stacks down there. We're hoping that they go against Kemri and get weakened so we can take them out. But we're going to let our troops build up a little bit. And then up somewhere in this region, I think he's actually slightly further east as of right now. Way, way to the northeast. We have King Lewin. You seek the lady's favor. And we can't really set him to his encamp stance yet, but we're going to try and fight the forces of chaos. Now, are we actually military? Yeah, we are military allies with Kislev, so if they engage us here, we'll be able to help them out against the war herds. That's a lot of troops, though. Gore herds, a couple of Cygors. They're a pain. Minotaurs with shields, Minotaurs. A giant and bestigors so we're not looking at the greatest setup to fight here I'd la rather see a lot more ungors and of course we've got RK on the ever chosen and his recovering army stack and Sigval the Magnificent who are trying to push in so we're gonna have to fight them over time hopefully it's not enough to actually hurt King Lewin overall He's got a pretty solid army stack, all things considered, and we do have our best gear for him. Armor of Brilliance and the Sword of Corone. So we're going to have to deal with that. But we took care of a lot of our post-turn mop-up last time. There's not really much we can do, aside from handing it over to the other nations and seeing what they do. The reason why I'm checking out the Dark Elf lands, though, we know our High Elf and allies are going in to fight with the Druki, but kind of curious as to what we're going to do once we either destroy or claim some of the lands up with the Norskins. They've been a pain in our side throughout the entirety of the playthrough, so yeah, we're going to have to either deal with them or do something rather wild. I think we're going to have Pack Ice Bay get destroyed by Lord Muffin on his way in. Because we do know that Wolfric and his big army stack is somewhere over here, so we don't have to worry about him too, too much. Let's pass it off to the other nations and see what they do. Of course, our allies in the Empire doing their thing. Being all, you know, full army stacks and all that they do. I'm really hoping that at least one of those army stacks is coming up to reinforce us. Because they have Demogriff Knights. And I think those are Demogriff Knights with Halberds? No, just regular Demogriff Knights, but either way, they're guys riding wingless griffins. That That's just massively powerful. And they've got a bunch of great swords act acting as their main infantry, so we don't really have to worry about the Empire's land forces too, too much. It is a matter of seeing where their generals are going to be going for the long term, though. I mean, the orcs have all been but been wiped out. We don't have to worry about too many Skaven. Everything's been pushing pretty nicely in one solid direction, and that's towards the forces of order. I mean, Hexuatl, um, Wolfwans, High Elves, under Lothern, the Empire, the Dawi, the Bretoni, the Wood Elves. Well, not so much the Wood Elves. They've been kind of at odds with us a little bit has been less than ideal. But the forces of order in general have been outpacing the forces of death and the forces of disorder. So 
we're in a pretty good state. I mean, the Forces of Order own pretty much the entirety of the map. All of the red, the blue, the green in this area, and the green, or orangey red and the white are all Forces of Order, so we control pretty much everything in the center of the map. It's far less broken up, the Vampire Counts have been all but destroyed. I think they actually have been destroyed. Unless Lamia is still in this. I think Lamia might still be in this. Yeah, the Silver Host is still there. So Lamia, we still have some vampires around, just like we have some orcs still around. Just, they're very rare now. And not the evil encompassing armies of the undead or the greenskins that we had to deal with at the very start of the campaign. Now maybe the dwarves will come up and help us against chaos too. Alaric get gold would be a nice addition to the forces trying to stump the Chaos Invasions. I'm pretty sure we can take on the Warherd of Chaos by ourselves, but I don't think that we can take on all of it. And while losing King Lewin's entire army stack would be brutal, it won't necessarily kill us entirely, so there is that. Kind of curious as to what Belgar or Belagar Iron Hammer is doing. He's been wandering back and forth through Bretonia for so long. He almost should have a war pony, because well, he's been spending so much time around the Bretoni lords that he should, he really should. All right, let's see what Sigvald does. He's probably going to come in. I don't think he can get close enough to assist Archeon in attacking anyone. Archeon's just going to move out on his own. He's got 17 units now. Not too big of a deal. They're kind of still separated, so we can try and fight them one-on-one. -on -one. It'd be really nice if Orion would come out and do something, but they're currently at war with the dwarves, so... There's very little hope of that. Kind of an extension of the War of the Beard. Even though that was kind of Malekith's doing, not... Okay, so Wolfric's on a War Mammoth. Good to know. So if we have to fight Wolfric, it's going to be tough, because Wolfric by himself is a massive, massive death dealer. Him being on a War Mammoth kind of sucks. I'm really interested to see what the War Herd of Chaos is going to do. If they try to engage King Lewin or Prague, well, that's not going to end well for them. And Lothurn has agreed to an alliance with the Exiles of Nehek. It's a little different. And that general is rocking the Sword of Cain. So many Phoenix Guards, so many great swords. I would love it if all of our infantry, well, the baseline infantry, were our squires, but... Well, we've been playing with the handicap most of this time, so we'll just have to kind of suck it up and deal with it. But if we manage to win with that handicap, it'll say more about our Bretonian generals than it does about anything else. Granted, I've been playing a lot of Battletech recently in anticipation of the winter update this year, Heavy Metal. So, my focus has not been on Total War for a while. I mean, I still do have over a thousand hours put into Total War Warhammer 2, which is not the most in the world, I know, but it's a fair investment of my time. It's still one of my favorite games, but I've just been really falling into Battletech, which means Thorium Mercs on Thursdays is so much fun to record, because, well, we're getting to the highlight of that campaign, too. It's a lot of fun. And with all the little updates they've been putting in, and the new mechs that have been coming out. I'm really looking forward to Heavy Metal. And then I'm wondering if they're going to give us more DLC packs, more mission types, or if they'll give us an expansion. I don't really want to see a Battletech 2 just yet, because, well, the original story is great. We'll get to see the culmination of it in the series as we go. But at the same time, the story left me wanting more. It really did. And while I like the restoration, 
I really like the Arano Restoration. I personally want to see the Ilkhan and the Invasion of the Clans. Some Battletech game has to give us Clan Warriors back. It was big in a lot of Mech Warrior games, and in some of the earlier computer games, Mech Commander, Mech Commander 2, but you don't see a lot of clan love a lot of these times. I just want to see the emblem of the Jade Falcon flying over things again, and of course have access to clan ER lasers and, you know, clan tech. I want my Timberwolf. Either a Mark D or a Mark B, because those are evil machines based off the old Marauder hull. Funny little bit of trivia that kind of doesn't relate to Total War Warhammer, but the whole idea of the Mad Cat, which is, again, a very, very, very solid platform. One of my favorite platforms. Second behind the Timberwolf, ironically. The targeting computer, the guy that first encountered it, couldn't decide if it was a Marauder or a Catapult, so it kept switching back and forth. The uh, identifiers for those being MAD and CAT. So that's how it got its name of Mad Cat. I know, really random, weird trivia, but it's kind of what I do here. And I, I enjoy it. Okay, maybe I'm just crazy. Stop looking at me like that. Okay. Whatever. Anyway, back to Total War Warhammer, because I'm kind of going off on a tangent tonight. I, I blame the overindulgence in food and work trips that are rotting what was left of my sanity. And you know, that wasn't a very large amount to begin with. Now, why are the Falls of Nagash and Kimri still throwing down? It's just kind of paving the way for Chaos to do their thing down there. The lady's favor. I hate to do it, but let's grab an alliance with the exiles in the heck. Follow suit with Lothern, because, well, the more unified we can be, the less we have to worry about. And the less we have to worry about, the easier it is for us to fight chaos. So, there's that. We're still pushing for as much chivalry as we can get. Because we're so close to initiating the final battle. I'm not even sure if it'll let us do the orc engagement now that the orcs are all but gone. I think they have like two settlements left. But still might be an option. I mean, fighting the greenskins is slightly easier than fighting chaos. Mostly because the greenskin troops, while very tough, are not Chaos Warriors in full Chaos Plate tough. Chaos Warriors with halberds. Ugh. Actually sends a physical sh chill down my spine thinking about that. We're seeing our Kislevite allies take on some of the Chaos random stacks that keep popping up really entirely sure what their end game plan is because well they've held on the prog which let's face it is kind of a miracle in and of itself but the fact that they've also pushed far to the southwest and taken over blocks of the empire helps too one of the cool new things with the updates that they just released for the hunter and the Beast, the Hunter and the Beast pack, is they've split Balthazar Gelt off from the Empire as just an Empire Legendary Lord. He now runs the Golden Order officially on his own, so that's cool. And they also added in a Electric Counts system. So each capital for each one of the Electric Counts that you get, you get to put out an Electric Count Sword made it a lot more in-depth and the politics of the Empire are a lot better. It's basically, it was an Empire rework as much as it was an expansion. I mean, yes, they got the Huntsman as an extra legendary lord, but it reworked the entire political system for the Empire, which helps a lot. And gives you incentive to go and bash on the Vampire Counts really, really early in the campaign. 
because that's a capital that you can just straight up go to war with, not have to worry about the politics of, and gain a very, very good, like, legendary item out of it. A beef pass? Uh, it's well out of our fight range, so let's just auto-resolve it. I was hoping that was going to be a better fight. That didn't destroy the War Herds of Chaos, so they must have another army stack out there somewhere. And that Chaos Lord is going to encamp. Granted, we're probably just going to encamp King Lewin and get him all settled and everything so that he can start regenerating his troops, especially now. There's our sewer cleansing decree against the Skaven. Picked up a couple of hedge wizards. Strength and honor. All right, King Lewin. I sent to your order. Let's get you to go into encamp stance. Not really sure where the other war herd of chaos is. So Archeon's down in here somewhere. And we got Prince Sigvald the Magnificent. Lord Muffin. We're going to send you towards Pack Ice Bay, but we want to do it in such a way that you're not taking as much attrition as possible. I mean, you don't have the strongest army in the world. Granted, you do have the Holy Wardens. Alright, Sarfurix. Let's see if you can go spot Archeon. Assault his units. Absolutely not. We want to keep an eye on the Lord of the End Times as much as we can. Uh, Thibault de Bois. We're going to bring you back towards the other Chaos decks and deal with them. As for our diplomacy options, there's not really much that we can use for the, those diplomacy options. Well, let's go with Commission Carpenter. See if we get our income up a little bit. Not exactly hurting for resources right now, but with our lords not having any of their vows, does kind of suck just a little bit. So we'll see where that ends up. Am. And then in two turns, we should be able to go after Bjornling's Gathering. Or possibly wait until Pious. Muffin gets up here. I don't know where the closest landing site to Pack Ice Bay is, but we do know that Wolfric is off doing Wolfricky type stuff. Not looking to upgrade any of our settlements per se right now. Let's cycle through and check and make sure that we've got a lot of our cool items. Karon looks pretty decent. Forest of Arden, there's no real special buildings there. Bordlow does have its vineyards. Gives us a little bit more control, some growth, and more wine production. But we don't have the Shrine of Banan yet. So why not? Let's grab the Shrine of Banan. Leoness doesn't have anything particularly awesome, but next turn, well, a few turns now, we could upgrade Leoness to a full structure, but it does not have any specialist structures. So I'm not too, too worried about it. Death Class and Blood River Valley don't matter. Arguillion. Uh, it's kind of a non-issue. Though we're sticking it to the Wood Elves just a little bit by... You know... Building up farmland and industry inside the forests. We do, however, need to hopefully get an upgrade for it in the not too distant future so we can get a chapel in there to the lady. Not seeing any of the other good lords. So we'll just pass it off to the other realms. And see what they do. Right now it's mostly what the Empire does to determine how things are going to go in certain places. And Carl Franz looks like such a dork on that Pegasus. I want to see him on Deathclaw, his griffin. 
And is Conroy von St Sighoven going to take out... No, he's not going to take out Archeon, the Lord of the End Times. Oh, and there's the... Dragon Ogre Shagoth Lord, whose name I constantly forget. Kermak, I think? <sighs> so it looks like the Warriors of Chaos are in a little bit better position than we thought they were. But with the Empire up there helping out a bit, maybe we'll be able to get through it unscathed? Never know. See what Balthazar Gelt does with his time. Are you seriously going to circle all the way around the reefs? I'm really hoping that's not indicative of the Empire going west from there. At this point, they should be hitting Chaos as hard as they can. funny. I play a lot of Total War Warhammer 2. Again, not recently. I've been kind of obsessed with Battletech, but I've only won the game a few times. Bretonia, High Elves, Chaos. Yeah, I played the bad guys. I like playing the bad guys. But the rest of them kind of... I try to play too many of the different races all at once. It ends up not working out for me. Because I'm a bit of an idiot. Now, what was the point of that? I don't even think the dwarves know what they're doing right now. That's Lord Yogi there on the shore. We kind of forgot about him for the last couple of weeks. Have to see what we can do with him on our next turn. I don't think there's really much we can do. Don't want to hurt our income too, too badly. Burundin Stoneheart. Going after the Wood Elves as well. Dwarf armies aren't as numerous, but man, are they tough as nails. That's a lot of longbeards. Old grumbling dwarves. Not enough beer in the entire world to pacify their disquiet, shall we say. Well, in addition to altering the Empire and adding the new legendary lords in, they did alter the maps lately. There are now the proper forts between Bretonia and the Empire that can be captured and taken care of. One of them does start in Marienburg's hands, which does weaken. Well, this, was that the Warriors of Chaos just losing Archeon? I think it was. There's my squeaky chair again, of course. Kolik Sun Eater. There we go. And he just got owned by Volkmar the Grim. So quite literally, the last... <laughs> Chaos army that we can see right now is Sigvald the Magnis Magnificent. I swear I can speak. It is a thing that can happen. The dwarves might lose an army here. They didn't really deal any damage to the Wood Elves in return. That's a little disappointing. Now, if you're looking for hard start locations, Orion. I guess any of the Wood Elves in general have a hard time. They start in Athaloran. They're surrounded by people that can really ride them down early on. Don't think that Empire army is in reinforcement rage. 
take on Sigvald. Otherwise, we might pull our king over there and go after Sigvald ourselves. That would eliminate the Warriors of Chaos threat. That would give us a fair chunk of chivalry, too. Lariel the Radiant taking out the entire remaining parts of the faction of the Servants of Chaos. Isles just rocking it in the New World. Granted, look at those army stacks. They have an entire f armada headed towards the New World, and they're just dropping elf after elf off onto the shores of the New World to push inland and take on the Druki. They're steamrolling right now, but we know how that goes because of the light of the Yazir campaign, so it's not too abnormal, I guess. They are still our allies, have been for a long time. Still possibly one of my favorite factions in the entire game. Bretonia is always going to rank first, because I like the Arturic Legend and the Shipwork Knights. But the High Elves have their own unique story within the Warhammer universe, and it's kind of interesting. So, yeah, they're probably always going to sit as one of my top three? Top five? Top three. Them, Lizardmen, and Bretonia. Not in that order, of course. Western half of the good guys, at least. Clan Rictus can't have too many settlements left. I think Slaver's Point might be their last one, though. We can't tell for sure. Sval's Anvil is getting destroyed by the Exiles of Nahak. I can't remember losing that army stack of its that it lost to the followers of Nagash. It does weaken them slightly, but they do have more armies they can move down and fight the followers of Nagash. Are they seriously sending a single army st Wow! They actually won that fight. That was a little surprising. Maybe we're seeing a resurgence of the followers in Nagash? Never know. And Clan Rictus is gone, so they didn't even have another settlement up north. So that's one less Ratman faction we have to deal with. Do you wish the lady's favor? Join war against Clan Mulder. No, we can possibly do that. With the threat of the Warriors of Chaos down and Kizla being in a narrow situation, wouldn't necessarily hurt to help them out here. the Empire's heroes wandering around. It's kind of cool. And Arachnos has a wah. Well, there's at least one Chaos fight that we can get. With King Lewin. Gets a little bit more chivalry. Alright, let's see what the Puppets of Chaos are going to do down south, because that could be a big deal overall. Oh. 
and they took out a Cam or not a Camryan, but a follower and a Gash. Army stack. I swear my brain is trying to catch up, but and he's on a Manticore. My strength and wisdom are yours. All right, Lord Muffin, let's tack you in here. Pack Ice Bay looks all but abandoned, so we can get you overland next turn. Blessings of the Lord Adadon is starting to recover. It's not too bad. Sarfurix. Salt the units. And it looks like he's out of reinforcement range of that Empire stack, so let's... Swap King Lewin over to a March stance. I just wipe out that chaos stack. Get back closer to Prague. Camp again. King Lewin gained a level though. What do we want to give him? Let's give him Scarred Veteran. Gain his hit points back up. Lady Die is working on Curse of the Midnight Wind, I think. But we can go with Missile Resistance for right now. And Thibault de Bois will bring back towards Al Haik. Kofor, we can install a harbor in port just to get it up a little bit. Now, what are we doing with Lord Yogi? My reputation precedes me. He has a bunch of infantry, but not a bunch of knights. He's got to rank up three more times to get the knight's vow. Not really anything easy to send him after. I guess we're going to have to just leave him put for now. <sighs> we're so close. So close to getting onto the final battle. But seeing as it's Thanksgiving and I'm really, really, really tired, I think that's a good place to end it for this week, guys. A little bit shorter than usual. If you liked the video, please consider hitting that like button. If you'd like to join up with the 232, possibly see yourself pop up in this or other Let's Plays, just hit that subscribe button and make sure you're going to turn your notifications on so you don't miss when a new video goes out. And remember, guys, life is a game, so play to win. And until next time, take care.